What's going on, everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Pitfall or Replay Pitfall Lost Expedition. Uh, I saw Pitfall was just dancing there. I see. I seriously just want to keep calling him Link for some reason. Uh, in the last episode, we started a grand adventure after we got dropped off in a forest because our freaking plane crashed. There's freaking fireworks going off. I don't know what the heck's going on. Um, before I get into this episode, I'm going to show you guys what's on the map screen here. Or the, the pause screen, I guess. <laughs> there is a map. Uh, let's check that out first. So you see, there's a bunch of areas here. The Lost Caverns, the Heart of the Jungle, which we're in, which is like the mostly the majority of the game. The Native Territory, which is also a pretty large portion of the game. The Snowy Mountains, actually, that's pretty big too. <laughs> so there's four huge sections, it looks like. Well, the Lost Caverns being the smallest of the bunch. Oops. And yeah, you get kind of a map, which is weird, because we haven't, like, this is just Lost Forest stuff. Just take a look at all the map stuff here. But it is actually really helpful. Although some areas are pretty hard to figure out how to get there. And it doesn't really spoil too much. But you do get like a little look-see of what, like kind of like art of what the game is going to look like. It's like concept art almost. That's pretty cool. So you can like see all the areas we've been. And it even tells you what items you need to like explore it properly. Like see, you see a little dynamite symbol, a little torch symbol there. Um, next up we have our notes. Uh, okay, now this the thing about the journal. I am going to read these. I'm going to read them at the end of every episode if we have any unlocks. I'll I'll check in between episodes. This episode is going to be probably a little bit bigger just because, like, you know, it's being in the game and we're unlocking so many things. So, oh, the, well, these are just hints. We don't need to read the hints. The bestiary, I'm going to also read. You see, we already, like, almost unlocked half the enemies of the game. So, I'm going to read those as well today. But once again, that'll be at the end of the episode. Inventory, I don't know what that is, actually. Oh, these are just items. Yeah, these are just items. So those are all the items we get in the game. Now you know exactly how many. Shaman, shaman shop. If you look above the shaman shop at the top of the page, there's two question marks. Or two sections of check mark, check mark, or question marks. I don't know what those are. Um, this is actually pretty helpful. The shaman shop. It tells you what you need to buy still. We already bought health, but we could buy a bunch of that in the game. So that's why this is still here. But let's say we bought breakdance. That would that would get grayed out to indicate we bought it. So I guess that's really... Well, we have notes. We have options. I mean, they're all standard. You guys don't really need to see that. And then save and quit. And that's it. So I just figured I would show that off. Whee! <laughs> I just fell. You don't take fall damage in this game. Um, sir, you're not a skeleton. <laughs> if you listen to them, they've pretty much gotten really crazy from being down these holes for so long, or being trapped, I guess. Let's go, it's so dark. Ooh, to the plane cockpit. Oh, it's cool, you can see the things flame up in the background. Mm. All the things are so dark. Alright, now, when you think of unkillable enemies, what's the thing you guys first think of? Scorpions? Me too! <laughs> It's really weird, you can't kill them, it's, it's impossible, you just stab them. You need to purchase more powerful attacks to squash these scorpions. Purchase, what is this DLC junk? You can't technically kill them by like hitting them off the ledge and wow, those guys are trying to attack me there. And here comes my favorite part. Oops, gotta slide down. Oops, gotta slide down. You guys remember that? Oh, it's so good. Um, now another thing that always weirded me out was if you go under here, whoa. he says, whoa. I don't know why it's always confused me. I guess because, I mean, well, here's the part piece of the plane, actually. Actually, it's the cockpit. That's right. It's weird that all these plane parts are... Like, we saw pieces of the plane, like, that way. So how come the front of the plane is here? And not only that, but it's facing this way. Wouldn't it be facing that way? I don't understand. But, yeah, you see a little red spot there. Take a closer look. It's actually a monkey arm. Poor monkey. For a long time, I thought it was either a fuse or blood. But, uh, no, it's a monkey arm. It's an orangutan arm. An orangutan. Alright, let's, let's go this way. So what you want to do here? And this took me a while to fail my first time through. So I'm going to come up here and then roll kick. Sweep kick. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, hey, hey <gasps> you made it. Any other survivors? The doctor, Mr. Leach, went off to find the others. Now, they <laughs> took that tank, the Gizmo 85. Yes, a real improvement over the Gizmo 84. Follow the tracks, I'm sure you'll find them. Will you help us locate everyone? I, uh, get to rescue the girl? I suggest you let her think she rescued herself. <laughs> Here, you might try gathering water from that pond out there. Oh, it's very clean. Tasty, even. I think it may even possess healing properties. And it looks like you could use some healing. Wow. Thanks. Then follow those tracks. Me. I've got a fly. Wee! 
he's so stupid and he's just when so I found stupid. out that Bittenbinder had survived the crash, I decided I'd follow his tracks to see if I could hitch a ride. I didn't know my choice would ultimately lead me to becoming lunch for a demonic jaguar, so off I went with my new canteen in hand. Cool. Now we have our first item. You received the canteen. It could hear it could carry could Harry Pitfall Harry the healing water found in magic fountains to drink equipped it with pl or up plus <laughs> it is a plus sign the deep pad that is and then hold C up but you'll have to fill the canteen with healing water first yeah there's our first item now this guy the pilot I guess I always thought he was bitten binder I mean he looks similar they have mustaches they have mustaches <laughs> that's really only the similarity um, are those sleeping monkeys up there? Look at the sleeping monkeys. Aww. And you can see the tracks again. Where do they come from? Aha, uh -huh, up here. Can we... Oh, there's like a cave up there. Oh, that, that sun glare is nice. You could actually see. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know if it's just my TV. I mean, it's definitely... Pretty rickety. ...showing up on the recording the same way, but, uh, yeah. Let's take out a canteen. <clears throat> and fill it up. Glug, 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 and I can gulp it down, and normally every block you drink would heal you, but since I don't have any damage right now, that's not doing diddly squat. Okay, let's sweep kick this tree. A, B. Bam. And monkeys? Monkeys? Monkeys. Did you guys see the monkeys? Mon- Monkeys, no! Huh? And it's weird that it says, huh? Because it's like you would think, well, you see those two guys running over there, but it's like you would think that the monkey just, you know, got hit hit by the shockwave of the tree and it knocked them out, or shocked them to the point where it knocked them out. But I think these monkeys, mon monkeys, <laughs> these monkeys being knocked out is supposed to insinuate that those two guys that just ran back into the native jungle were the ones to knock them out. I think. I mean, I'm not entirely sure. It's weird. I don't understand how, like, what's supposed to happen there or how that's supposed to work, but... I think it's supposed to insinuate the natives did it. Freaking natives! That's racist. <laughs> Hear them screaming in junk. Oh no. Logs. Logs! <laughs> okay, so. If you turn around here. Oh, okay. There's the thing! Oh. Rapidly keep from sinking. Oh man. And you'll see the logs are like sink to the quicksand and disappear. I don't know why. It's weird to me that they, like, disappear like that. Because, like, wouldn't it just be easier and better looking for them to have just made the log sink into the quicksand instead, or the mud, or whatever? Yeah. I, I don't I don't understand. I don't get it. <laughs> but, yeah. it's. I think it, I love how the logs kind of pile up, too. That, that's pretty cool to watch. Have they, whoa! I did not expect to jump off that log. I also did not... Come on, turn around. I also did not expect to jump on it and not take damage. Okay, so. Ah, it's always a scary. They hit this rock here and they jump over it. Wow, that totally hit my head. <laughs> Alright, let's go kick some native butt. Oh, good lord. And once you get far up enough, they'll start throwing coconuts at you! Alright, I will kill them. What the heck? They're masks! They're defensive shield! Finish him! And if you see, look at the mask here. There's a big O face on it now, which is so stupid. I love it. But look at this mask. It has a it has an angry face on it. What? You knock him out. The facial expression changes. It's so dumb. I love it. <laughs> All right, let's get down here. All these these like statues. So you can't sneak past these guys. But it's way too long. To walk. Honestly, just punch them all out. It just take like you'll get some freaking coconuts flown at you, but it should should not be enough to kill you. Look, there's native scarecrows. Ugh, ugh, I will destroy your culture with my bare hands. No, I don't have bare hands. Just you know, my my bare knuckled hands. You know. Is there? I thought like there's something down there. There's something down there. There's not. There's just death and doom down there. Got you. Ah! I did not see you coming. Actually, <laughs> they jump out of the bushes and all that, so they are hard to see. Come out of nowhere all the time, but they do take a second to put their mask on. If anyone jumps in here, right? Yeah, see, they just pop out of nowhere. Actually, I guess this would be a good time to show. Drink my canteen. Gulp. There we go, and you can fill it back up. So, your health is really doubled in this game, and you can, like, drink it 
when you, uh, as you're taking, whoa, as you're taking damage, so it's not like if someone hits you, <laughs> he fell down, it's not like if someone hits you, then, um, you stop drinking it, you keep drinking, actually, that might not be true, hmm, I might have to do some investigation, alright, let's see what's going on over here, whoa, Finally, these guys have some smarts. Shouldn't they have closed that gate a while ago? Unless they're gonna close one behind me. Uh oh. <laughs> Hidua! I love it. I don't care. So, pretty easy mini boss fight here. Let's roll everywhere. <laughs> uh, rolling is pretty great. It would be quicker, but it slows you down to the, like almost to a dead stop when you're going up there. So that's why. Rolling isn't like the rolling and oh, there's another one still alive apparently. Can I knock you into the pit? That would be funny. Oh, I want to hit him into the pit. That's my bread and butter of the day hitting freaking natives into pits and then having the pits eat them. <laughs> Talk about sentences that have never been said before in humanity. The altar of Hutka? Wow, freaking no. Oh, yeah. The Gizmo 85. It's so weird, like, these tra- I don't know why, I just- I just thought this was, like, a pass someone made, but no, it's just the freaking- Almost- it looks almost like tank, doesn't it? A tank? That's really the only thing that would tear up the terrain that much, and look at another propeller, it's like- Oh, I wonder if this is the piece that got hit off by the lightning! That'd be cool. Three, out of curiosity. No, okay. Uh, actually, I actually get a up here. Oh no, I hit my head! I hit my head. If it weren't for me, then you'd be dead. There's actually a way to um, glitch this out. Oh, you're so close. That's actually an area we'll be going to eventually. Um, you're just. To the great tree. But there's a fence, and there's no way to open it. It's impossible! Kind of. <laughs> Well, I mean, impossible to do anything about it from down here. So, let's take a look at what else we have here. We have this giant altar. I guess that's why it's called the Altar of Blubblubblu. Do I need, no, I don't need any function water. <laughs> ah, so sexual sounding. Wait, did the tracks go that way? Oh no, this is just, oh, see, this is a path. Let's go over here, go over yonder. The battered bridge, yeah, but we need a torch. Oh, whoa, I like, got caught in the spider web. That was crazy. That was crazy times. I should go back over here. Whee! I guess rolling is kind of fast, faster if you're, like, in, if you're not on an incline. So this looks kind of non-conspicuous, right? And that's not even sarcasm. It really doesn't look conspicuous to me. If you sweep kick it, you can actually knock out some bricks and come under here. And, and Oh, there we go. I was going to say, can I not do this? There we go. We got another idol of like a broken idol head thing. I don't freaking know. Like the the thing that the thing that holds the idols was broken. There is weird. Um, so let's go over here. Heroic dash. I need to cross hot coals. <laughs> Mind over matter. Ow. <laughs> I just love how you go flying off screen whenever you do that. It's the best. All right. See these vines. These very like you know natural vines that don't look like the game creators just placed them here. No, not at all. <laughs> Go up here. Uh, oh, well, can I make it from here? Maybe. There's no thoughts up here. Um, there's the thoughts. There's nothing in them ever, but it's fun. Yeah, so if we go up to the very top here, there's a shaman! I wonder if that's an actual language. That'd be really cool. So, while we could buy extra health, I don't know if there's another. Um, what's it called? An Inuit for some reason. <laughs> I don't know if there's another shaman uh, later on that before you know the mystery item becomes relevant. So let's buy the mystery item. I'm not sure what this is, but it reminds me of a simpler time, a time when all I had to worry about was jumping on crockheads and grabbing money bags. And it comes with a note saying, "To use it, I have to find the Punchow Shrine and a torch." Weird. Let's buy it. That's a, that's a hint to what it is. A very strong hint. Head to the Punch House Shrine in the heart of the jungle to take your new purchase for a test run. See, that are being kind of like cheeky about it. I can't believe I just said cheeky non sarcastically. <laughs> I do like that word. I've always liked that word. Um, so we have to head back. The 
punch house. Shrine was the was the thing in the last episode where there were uh, um, where there where there was uh, little platforms you would jump on and it would cause platforms to pop up and there were switches. And look, that guy's not walking with the other ones. What the heck? Oh, look at their angry faces. <laughs> They're also out of sync. I don't know why. Every time I see that cutscene, something different and weird happens. I don't know why. <laughs> All right, let's go kick all their butts. There's five. We fought five last time. I think five was like the limitation or something. Because we fight a lot of like groups of five anyway. Yeah. Maybe get low on health for the first time. You'll gotta use canteen to heal. Thing. All right. Let's roll back. I'm rolling back to go for the healing water. Even though I think there's healing water coming up in the next area. But I'm gonna end the episode off here. So. If you actually look, I think the water's like wavering back and forth, like above. I oh, don't know, never mind. It's already gone. Um, Alright, well, I guess that's really it for this episode. Well, minus the, the journal stuff. If you guys are interested in hearing me talk for the next like five minutes, I'm just reading a book. Feel free to tune out here. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, please free, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you're already. My name's Chris, and in the next episode, we will visit. Is it going to pop up again? Did it go far away enough? The, to the great tree. I just guess I want to start a native go. Ooh! I guess not. Okay. And by the way, we didn't need, even need to fight these guys. We technically could have just rolled past them and went to the great tree. <laughs> Alright, so let's read the journal. Oh, well, the notes and then the journal. Oh, we have three entries now. So, entry one. I think we get an entry after every cutscene. January 24th, 1935. Wow, I didn't realize this game was so put back so far in the past. 9.45 p.m. I've boarded a cargo plane bound for Pern. Or Pern. Pern? <laughs> that looks like an N. Uh, for Forrestal has been investigating a local legend of an ancient Chakshopoyan Ch temple. I'm going to see if I could beat them to it. On board the plane is a group of explorers also bound for Peru. They're pretty tight-lipped about what they're up to. Their leader is a man named Bittenbinder. Bittenbinder with... Okay... Why is his arm in a sling? I like him. Reminds me uh, reminds me of me in about 20 years, minus the gut, I hope. <laughs> I love it. There's also this girl, Nicole. Total ice queen mixed with a dash of bookworm. But hey, I always love a challenge. Just gotta turn on the old pitfall charm. She'll be falling for me by the time this plane touches down. Guaranteed. Well, the plane did touch down, alright. And that's it. I don't know when he found time to write that journal. <laughs> but okay, that's the first one. You get a little check marks every time you read them. January 25th, 1935, 7.13 a.m. Plane hit a storm and went down hard. Managed to get most everyone off in time, but we ran out of chutes. Heroic me, I went down with the ship. Sudden bit binder and that nutty Professor Leech, I think. Not sure, though, because I blacked out before the crash. I don't... I don't remember seeing Leech on the plane. Well, I saw him in the first cutscene, but I don't remember it being, like, relevant that he was there on the plane. I didn't even know he was on the plane. I thought he got off, too. And I must be the luckiest guy alive. Woke up in a field of flowers about 300 yards away from the crash site. Guess I was th uh, thrown free at impact. I could see flares firing in the distance. So there's got to be at least one other survivor. Going to try and find a way to him. So I guess this was written before we saw the pilot. I don't think the pilot has a name. January 25th, 1935, 8.27 a.m. Made to the cockpit <laughs> and found Gra Graham. Well, there we go. He has a name. <laughs> The pilot. He was firing off the flares and almost took my head off with one. He told me Bittenbinder and Leech took off in a Gizmo 85, whatever that is, to go round up survivors. And then he gave me a canteen and told me to drink magic water from the jungle fountains to heal myself. Normally I'd think he's a, he's got a screw loose, but he, uh, having sampled those fountains myself, I'm happy to get the canteen. That, that water is good stuff! Yay, drugs! So I figure I'll follow Bittenbinder's tracks and see if I could lend or yeah, lend a hand. Maybe find a way to get out of this jungle and see if I could put some more moves on Nicole. That is awesome. <laughs> Alright, so that's all the ones we've unlocked so far. The hints are just stuff that tells me to move the camera, do this. Now the bestiary, the big one. Oh boy, pit monster. I love the artwork too in the journals. How do these guys keep showing up wherever I go? Maybe it's something to do with my name. Anyway, they always follow the same old story. Open, close, open, close, repeat. Occasionally stay open. Fortunately, if I fall into one, they'll always chew me up a bit. Ouch. And spit me back out. Guess they have no taste. <laughs> uh, swinging monkeys. Yay, look at that swinging little happy monkey. These guys are a minor annoyance, really. Uh, they're just having fun swinging around, but they'll send me flying if I don't watch out. 
and there's not much I could do to stop them. Their momentum will push them past any kind of attack I could throw at them. Yeah, pretty much. Howler monkey! Whoa, he's scary looking. These guys are usually found sleeping during the day. Sleeping the day away, snoring loud enough to wake the dead. But if I make the mistake of walk waking them, they start screaming even louder. And their buddies in the trees start pelting me with melons! Oh, they're melons, not coconut. That makes sense, because they do squish around. So long story short, don't wake these guys up. And if they do wake up, shut them up. Azap! As soon as possible. Piranha. Whoa, that's also really scary. Gotta watch out for these bloodthirsty fish. They'll swarm on me if I get the if I get the chance and quickly suck my life away. Nothing much I could do to stop them, so I guess I've gotta swim faster. Gotta go gotta swim faster. Crocodile. So it's not an alligator, it's a crocodile. Crikey! If one of these guys grabs me, I've gotta fight my way out before they eat me alive. Uh, but if I'm fast, I could use uh, them in water as platforms to reach tough to get er, spots. The ones in the mud, I'd better give them a wide berth to break to break free. Yeah, and that just explains how to break free. So we haven't seen the ones in the mud yet. Are alligators only in Australia? I feel like it's an Australia thing. Shaman, he's not an enemy. <laughs> These guys love treasures. I don't know what he's collecting them for, but whenever I run into him in the jungle, he's got a bunch of nice stuff for me to trade for more treasure. Who knows? Maybe if I buy everything he's got, uh, I'll get a special gift with purchase. I don't remember what that is. Huh. Electric eel. These eels are completely passive. No real interest in getting in my way at all. Doesn't mean they're not dangerous, though. They're constantly giving off megawatts of electric current. And if I get too close, I'll get zapped. Plus, they can make the surface of water completely impassable without some kind of raft. Bush ninja! These guys love to sneak around bushes trying to whack me from behind. If I listen, I can hear them coming easily. Fortunately, to beat them is a little tougher when they're... In the open, it doesn't take much to finish them off, but if I try to attack them directly when they're in the bush, they've got the upper hand and can smack me hard. So basically, uh, from a distance, I've got to use the sling to flush them out of their bushes first, or try to dodge their attacks and strike the bushes while they're in it. Spoilers. Scorpion! Uh, these things are just gross! I hate them! Plus, they've got really tough skin and shrug off most of my strikes. Sure, I can knock them around, but to truly squash them like bugs they are, I need a more advanced combat move like a smash strike for sale from your local friendly sherman merchant sherman i meant shaman silly me native these guys are hilarious terrible aim running around yelling stuff i just love them <laughs> that's awesome that's pretty much what i said too the only problem they pose is when they start blocking with their big masks but when that happens all i've got to do is do a sweep kick uh, to trip them up and then i can finish them off so i think that's it if you guys actually stuck around for that that's awesome i think these just yeah, they're just... Oh. Oh. Okay, these are actually re uh, relevant and I can read them. An ordinary canteen containing extraordinary water. I found several ancient fonts in this region that seem to generate water that has healing properties. So carrying a little extra could come handy in a pinch. Okay, that's definitely it this time. So, I guess, stick around for that. Awesome. Thank you very much. And yeah, if you take a look at the shaman shop now and your book, uh, the mystery item is blanked out, kind of great out slightly. So this ended up I spent like ten minutes almost reading that. Thank you guys so much for watching. And the next one we'll go to the great tree again. Yay bye